how's everybody doing? I hope you're all keeping well in the current circumstances. It's been a while since I've done a video, so it's high time I, I caught up really. Just wanted to mention a few things. We've had this MG ZS EV since the end of 2019. I think it was November I got it. And life's been pretty good with it. I mean, I haven't done a huge number of miles. I've, like a lot of people, I'm working from home at the moment. I've actually been working from home for most for the last sort of 12 years or so, actually, I think 12 years, thereabouts, certainly over a decade. So the COVID situation hasn't really changed my life in terms of what I'm doing travel-wise much. And this car is currently on 5,333 miles. So as you can see, it's not getting a huge amount of use. And I suppose that that's part of the reason why I don't, I haven't really done much in terms of vlogging about it. I didn't even really vlog about when we picked it up when I went and picked it up from uh, from Chorley. There's plenty of other people doing really good videos about the MG ZS EV, so it's already a sort of crowded market, if you like. And I'm not uh, I'm not really worried about recreating, you know, reinventing the wheel when other people do a great job on it. So that's really why I haven't done too much in the way of videos about it. Um, but I'm I'm perfectly happy with it. Just to you know, obviously I've done well over a year now uh, driving it in all kinds of climates and uh, well within the UK I should say I haven't been driving Norwegian winters but it's uh, certainly a great car yeah so generally happy with it I can't really comment on the I know there's been people who had issue with firm, with firmware updates uh, I did have the firmware update done at the end of last year November time the issue people have had with a decrease in range I can't really comment much on uh, I have driven it further afield, but only about just over 100 miles, really. There is a firm, there is a subsequent firmware update to fix that issue with uh, apparent decrease in range. So if you haven't already got that and you're an MG ZS EV owner, it's probably worth getting. Just coming into Corley Services northbound here, and this is really the reason why I've, I've come out to do this little talk now. It seems an opportune moment. So Corley's in Warwickshire, um, and I'm uh, I'm part of the Warwickshire EVs group, and so this is this is relatively local. This is quite local to me, albeit it's not actually somewhere that I would typically come because uh, unless I'm going north on the M6 or south on the M6. But, well, no, actually north for me on the M6, I wouldn't tend to come here. But uh, oh yes, there we go see this yeah very nice so the ecotricity pumps are still here but more interestingly from the point of view of EV owners because they're the old units and they're not uh, you know typically e Ecotricity electric highway units are not that great, but look what we have here. Oh, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Instavolt units. I'm not going to stop and charge here, I'm actually going to do a little drive out and turn around and come back and stop at the southbound ones just to, to see what they're like as well. But, uh, yeah great to see these here fantastic news and this is this is more like what we need for regular ev owners you know non-tesla owners this is the kind of redundancy you know eight units that's the kind of redundancy we need typically at service stations and it's great to see that we've got them locally in warwickshire at corley these will be great for anyone traveling up the m6 or down the m6 it's between junctions three and four on the m6 so anyone anyone around the coventry area um, before you get to, you know, further up to Birmingham, it's uh, it's a great place to stop and uh, and charge. Eight of them is fantastic. You know, we're in a situation now. Just talking generally about charging in the UK, things have moved on dramatically from when I did those first Leaf videos back in 2013, uh, sorry, 2014, when we first got the Leaf. Uh, just around that time, the 
national infrastructure in terms of rapid charges was was pretty woeful back then. And you know, it was, there's owners previous to me who could test, testify that well, it was non-existent. Yeah, tw 2011-ish time, it was it was really sparse. I mean, you compare the charge map, the charge point map. You know, I, I use that map typically. Uh, if you chart, if you compare that with how it was historically, now. It's, uh, it's incredible how it's changed. So uh, it's, it's great to see. I've got nothing but praise for Instable. They, uh, they've they done such a great job with their charge points and they work exactly how they should work. I You turn up with your phone or a, a contactless debit card, credit card, whichever, and you just swipe it and charge. And yeah, okay, it costs 35 pence a kilowatt hour. You know what? I don't care. I, I, I'm I'm happy to pay 35 pence per kilowatt hour for the convenience of being able to use those when I need to use them. They're so reliable as well. Those tritium points, they're, t they're typically tri tritium historically, which is an Australian manufacturer, I believe. Those historical charge points are trivial to you. The new ones, I'll check them actually when I stop southbound. I haven't really clocked what, what brand they are. So I head back south now on the on the M6. Swing back round and head to the southbound Cordy services and see what see what they look like there. Back into Warwickshire. So another little update, we now have our Nissan Leaf back. The Nissan Leaf has been up with my in-laws for well, since last summer, really. Uh, we took it up last summer because my daughter, who's driving it all the time, really, she uh, she went to do her third year of study in, uh, in Paris. And so she wasn't going to be using the car. And rather than us having it sat around at home, we decided it would be quite a sensible thing for it to... for it to avail itself to my... Um, my in-laws. So we took it up to Grimsby to North East Lincolnshire and they, they've they had the leaf for yeah, ne nearly a year, coming up a year. Uh, and we went and got it back um, last weekend actually. We went up and got it back. So it's now back with my daughter. That's, uh, it's actually lost one of its uh, battery bars now after 2013 the car is, this is the 2013 car, so it's finally lost one of its battery bars. Um, I'll put up the, I took a picture of the dashboard this morning to, to get the mileage, so it wasn't 100% what sort of mileage it's done. It's not done a huge amount of mileage, again, you know, we don't, we haven't typically done the odd, we haven't typically done normally long journeys. We've done the odd silly expedition with them, like you know, the leaf's been down to Land's End, yeah, we went down to Devon and Cornwall, had a holiday in it. Separate video on that. But uh, typically it's been local journeys, which is what most people do. But yeah, so while, while she was away in France, um, my in-laws had use of the leaf. Um, and like I said, there were, there were good reasons for that. It was out of our way, so it wasn't, on our, it wasn't in our way, it wasn't on the road, just doing nothing, sat around. You know, they could make use of it useful car to them. They're doing mainly his mainly local journeys so it made sense for them to use it. There was another good reason for it as well in that we transferred ownership of the car to them which uh, which enabled them to get a charge point installed at their house which obviously benefits us if we're going up to them regularly um, that benefits us when we go up there instead of charging with a granny cable we can use you know a dedicated charge point and in that case, it's a Zappi. And a few things came together nicely here because they were interested in having solar PV installed. So everything tied in neatly. You know, they, they had they had solar PV fitted. Um, they had a charge point fitted, and they're up in northeast Lincolnshire. They're in a place called New Waltham, the outskirts of Grimsby. And whenever we go up there, we tend to go through. We tend to go a nice road, the B1203 from Louth to New Waltham which is a lovely road to drive or ride indeed on a motorbike. And uh, it goes that place, that goes to a place called Bimbrook. And Bimbrook is the home of, or it's historically the home of, 
the people who make the Zappi, my energy. It's just they're just on a little village industrial unit in Bimbrook. They've actually recently just moved into uh, Stalingrad, Grimsby, uh, into a, a bigger place there. Now they're obviously a big success story internationally. They've they've grown pretty damn fine, and there's a there's a nice happy story going on around northeast Lincolnshire now. So they had a Zappi installed, Zappi too, like ours, and have subsequently decided that they will indeed get an electric car themselves. So that's great. That worked out brilliantly all around. And that, I'm sure they're going to be very happy with that. Um, Mother-in-law's choosing that really, and she's still undecided on precisely what model she's going for. So uh, I can obviously give her some pointers, but ultimately it's going to be her decision. Her taste will differ from mine, and their requirements will differ from ours. Okay, I can, straight away I can see the charge points coming in to Quality Services Southbound. You can see the lights on them as soon as you get in the car park. There they are. They're over near the Starbucks for reference. But yeah, I will have a quick blast here actually on the on the charge point. Go in the middle. Okay. Instavolt, call yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This side, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's one less this side. Anyway, uh, I can't. I want to see where the branding is on this this charge point. I'm going to have a quick sneak round the back. See if there's any names on the back. Can't see anything. It's no reference to who they're made by. Does it, if anybody knows, put a comment because I'm interested to know who makes these points. But anyway, let's do the old charging. This is one thing I'm not overly keen on on the MG. Is how this all this fits together. Okay, so. Debit card. Get it. And it's as simple as <phone rings> authorizing. Plug in. It says use gloves if possible. I've got um, I've got wipes and anti-covid stuff in the car so okay ccs is plugged in waiting for ev okay the ev just locked locked to the plug and it claims it's charging see the LEDs pulsing on the MG side so that's that's the site that's a visual sign externally that it's charging yeah I was gonna say battery wasn't 10% <laughs> it was just obviously negotiating with the car and getting the sorting out the protocols to try and find out what the battery was at in the car another thing to talk about briefly I had these plates done now in the UK you can have this green stripe strip on the uh, on the plate let's get back in the car yeah and the green strip on the plate is only permissible on EVs so did I need them no I didn't I didn't really need them I quite fancied them let's just be honest I mean people spend money on all sorts of tosh yes people will quite reasonably say Oh, what a waste of plastic why did you have no plates made yeah do you know what it's a fair point i'm not i'm not an eco warrior i am um, generally i like to be environmentally good but i i won't you know i'm not a yogurt weaver i'm sorry i'm just not 
uh, I, I, I do a fair bit. Obviously, I drive and ride electric as much as I can. We have solar PV at home. I recycle stuff, but I'm not obsessive about it. So I had them made up. I had the I already had the blue ones, and um, I had the U Union flag and GB on them. And uh, it transpires now since the start of this year that. Um, you can now drive on those plates abroad. So if you have the GB and the Union flag on your car plate, you don't require a GB sticker anymore. If you have the EU flag on and GB, you, you now require a GB sticker. So, and it's that's nothing to do, well, it's a result of Brexit that we have the, um, we have that rule now where you can drive abroad with a GB and a Union flag. But that dates back to um, a treaty signed in 1968, actually. In fact, in fact, since 1968, according to that treaty, countries could optionally have registration plates with the national flag and the ISO code, the vehicle ISO, it's not an ISO code, it's a vehicle, the vehicle co co country code um, on the plate. So that, that's always been an option since 1968. That was a, a Vienna. Vienna Treaty treaty on international traffic or something. I don't know. Um, I, I, did, I was sad enough to look into it recently. But yeah, since 1968, that's the case. And that's what, you know, in Norway, you have plates like that. You have registration plates like that. So people are going to be, people are going to make a fuss about it and call us flag shits and things like that. But the reality is it's a 1968 treaty. And the pract practicality wise, yeah, it's great. Just have GB and a, and a Union flag on your plate. It's nice. It's colourful. It's nice to see little flags from different countries. It's, it's more interesting. I always found that more interesting back in the day. So, yeah. That's one of the reasons I did it. It looks nice. Uh, the green stripe thing. Yeah, it's it's not going to make a massive difference. Obviously, it's a big visual clue if you're parked in a, in a place for EVs or if you're in a if you're in areas which are restricted to EVs, it's a really obvious visual sign that you are an EV. Um, and the reality is enforcement's gonna probably happen with cameras, but you know, if, if you if somebody's patrolling, let's say, a, a place which is or, or keeping a lookout for cars and they see one with a green stripe, um, they just they're just gonna know it's electric. So there we go. That's that's a registration plate. While the while the leaf was in um, New Waltham in North East Lincolnshire. We had a, I had a bit of a frantic call from a stepfather-in-law um, regarding battery, uh, problem with the car starting, and it was a 12 volt battery. And to be fair, that 12 volt battery was, I never replaced it. So it's it's been in the car since 2013. So it's done pretty well, really. Uh, it's done pretty well, considering it's been in there since 2013, and it's only just gone, what, eight years later? So that's, that's not a bad service life for a 12 volt battery. But yeah, um, so that went while they had it. He just went and got a replacement from Halfords and that's sorted. But it did make me think about um, keeping an eye on the 12 volt charge. And um, this is where I'm going to mention a, a fellow YouTuber, Andrew Till. Uh, Andrew's got a good good YouTube channel. He's done some great great YouTube videos. And he's a fellow um, he's a fellow end to ender actually, electric end to ender. Um, he's travelled from Lands End to John and Groats in the UK, which is kind of the classic long distance route. It's the one I did, uh, show the thing again, that's the one I did on the Zero DSR. It was the first person to do it on an electric motorcycle. But uh, Andrew's done it in the in his electric car as well. He, he's worth he's worth a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to him. But Andrew did a, a video not so long ago about um, a, a wireless battery monitor, a, a Bluetooth battery monitor. Uh, for monitoring 12, 12 volt state of charge. My initial thought was that would be useful for my petrol motorcycle. So I actually got one for my petrol motorcycle. I've historically had issues with the charging system on that. Um, uh, known charging system issues with Hondas. Um, they're notorious for issues with regulator rectifiers, stators going. So I fitted that to the motorcycle. Was quite impressed with it. Yeah, does, does quite a good job. And then I've, um, I've subsequently this morning I've I've fitted one to both the Nissan Leaf that my daughter drives and this MG ZS EV. So it's now on 
The only vehicle it's not on actually is the Zero DSR because it doesn't have a 12 volt battery. The Zero is completely um, by the mod. It's, it's powered by the monolith. Everything, everything is powered by the monolith. And in terms of the motorcycling situation, uh, I haven't ridden for quite a while now. The bikes have been sat in our garage doing nothing. Um, the the rule in the UK has been, you know, necessary journeys really. So, not much in the way of biking to report. However. The club for which I'm a, an observer, a trainer, um, Coventry and Warwickshire Advanced Motorcyclists, I'll give them a shout out, which is a which is a part of IAM Road Smart, the Institute of Advanced Motorists in the UK. Um, we will be starting up our training activities soon again, um, in line with government advice and I, IAM Road Smart advice. So the first thing we're going to be doing actually is. Um, peer assessment between us observers because many of us haven't you know we don't need to ride the bikes so we haven't ridden lots lots of us haven't ridden for quite a while and we just want to make sure we're up to scratch before we start taking other people out and training them seems fair enough so yeah we're, we're going to be going out soon next couple of weeks um we're, we're starting to meet up in small groups and um just like i say doing peer reviews so yeah once we start those activities back up again i'll be out on the zero a lot more and uh, i'm really looking forward to it because i've missed riding that bike uh in terms of how it is health wise it's apparently fine i've occasionally periodically gone in the garage and checked and um yeah it seems to be absolutely fine no problems with it the battery status is good i left it at about 70 percent. but yeah it's uh i'm really looking forward to getting back out on the bike and maybe doing some more videos and uh talking a bit more about bike things again uh talking of which good news again relatively local news i'm i live in nuneaton in warwickshire and our neighboring neighboring town is um hinkley which and hinkley for those who don't know is the home of triumph they have developed an electric motorcycle so that's fantastic news uh, it'll be great to see um be great to see them uh, get that out it's your standard launch electric electric motorcycle. It's something stylish and snazzy and good looking. It's, it's not something that would particularly interest me at this stage. I want a touring motorcycle. Somebody make a touring motorcycle with, which I can put panniers on properly and a, and a rapid charging one. I mean, the DSR would be perfect if it had rapid charging. It doesn't. So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that rapid charging touring motorcycle. The one I can get down to the Alps on then I'll be really happy. Then potentially the petrol bike can go. Until that day, the petrol bike stays, sadly. Although I do love that bike. While I'm talking about Triumph, let me give a shout out to Sam Baker of New Zealand, who's, uh, who's who's done some great videos on YouTube. You must, if you're a biker, or even if you're not a biker, you, you must subscribe to Sam. He's uh, he's done some fantastic content. He's, he's finishing off a series of, of um, videos where he's done a trip with his other half down to um, the South Island of New Zealand. He now rides a Energica Ego, and uh, he's taken that on the trip and she's taken the Triumph. And let's just say it's not the electric bike which is having electric problems. <laughs> sorry, sorry Triumph. I got lots of friends who are Triumph owners and uh, they, are, they are good bikes, but Actually, that, there's a commonality with Zero there in that some of them are just lemons sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, I should probably take that bit out of the video. Ah, publishing be damned. No, um, I mean, obviously my personal experience with, I had a lemon of a Zero bike. The one I have, I had and have still subsequently has been amazingly good. And, um, you know, it's been great. It's been solid. So that's just, that's just life. Sometimes you get, you know, sometimes you get a duff. Sometimes you get a Friday afternoon bike or car or whatever. Uh, it's just reality. But yeah, look at take a look at New Zero Land. It's Sam's uh, videos, New Zero Land, and that particularly that recent series where they're traveling the north, uh, right where they're traveling the South Island. I mean, apart from anything else, it's just a nice travel. You know, it's just like a nice journey or travel vlog. Uh, if you watch it for no other reason than they uh, than that, it's worth watching. Anyway, I think that will do for now. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry it's been so long. 
um, and uh, hope to see you again soon. Again, stay safe. Vaccinations are going well in the UK at the moment and I uh, hope that continues. But wherever you are in the world watching, uh, you know, all the best. I hope everything gets better wherever you are. I know it's already good in some parts of the world. Irrespective, wherever you are, I wish you well and uh, stay healthy and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.